Welcome back to the Value Investors Club. I'm your host, Timo Wunderlich. Let's get right into it with VIC Readings, the format where we look at the best of the best value investment recommendations by the best of the best value investors out there. Today, we have Caesars Entertainment Inc., ticker is CZZ. R, a price at the point of filing is $45. This is not recommendation, not advice. Please do your own diligence before investing into anything. And let's get right into it. Description. Caesars, CSR, a current price $45, 24-month price a target $150. Uh, Caesars is the largest gaming operator in the U.S. with over 50 properties between Las Vegas and regional markets. Equity represents a tremendous value, offering investors a plus 15% normalized free cash flow yield with multiple drivers of growth that is underpinned by a business with an unreplaceable asset base, competitive modes, and an exceptional management team. Shares are down approximately 60% from their October 2021. Um, highs given expectations of a forthcoming recession and associated investors' di disinterest in equities with perceived cyclical and balance sheet risks. However, we think investors are overly discounting these risks in Caesar's equity, discussed below. At current valuation, we estimate that a Caesar's owned real estate portfolio, which underlies properties that account for 50% of earnings, alone provides well over 1.5x equity coverage when applying a gaming REIT multiple to the underlying earnings stream. This valuation discount deepens when considering value from Caesar's operating assets where free cash flow growth should accelerate due to, number one, the return of high value convention and uh, international visitors to Las Vegas, and number two, normalization of growth capex and economic returns from two billion of uh, capitalists harvested over the next 12 to four, 24 months. And number three, one billion dollars revenue run rate digital business inflects to profitability and benefits from improved eye gaming traction and robust industry growth. And number four, interest expense is reduced through debt pay repayment. While macroeconomic uncertainty obviates our ability to precisely forecast the timing of cash flows, we estimate the business should generate $2.5 billion to $3 billion of unlevered free cash flow, excluding growth capex, within 24 months. Applying a 15x multiple, which we view as appropriate given our view of business quality and growth, would yield $150 per share of value, 200% plus upside. At the midpoint. As such, investors can participate in the equity at a massive discount to our estimate of intrinsic value and should benefit from ongoing value creation as the business compounds capital at high RIC and utilizes excess free cash flow to retire debt, a combination that should unlock valuation multiple expansion over time. We believe the current undervaluation is explained by our miscalibration of cyclical and leverage risks. Cyclical. Investors appear to be mis misjudging the durability of Caesar's earnings power through a cycle given the memory of the GFC and its devastating impact on Las Vegas. However, an analysis, an analysis of present conditions with those preceding the GFC reveals such a comparison to be deeply flawed for numerous reasons. Number one. Las Vegas hotel surged by 12% in 2009 relative to 2007 as unemployment climbed to 10%. This extreme supply imbalance was accentuated by a market structure that was less consolidated than it is today, with Caesar and MGM now collectively controlling 60% of rooms on the Strip, limiting promotional intensity. Furthermore, perspective Supply growth is benign, uh, less than 1% annually, and uh, unemployment, although a lagging indicator, is at 3.7% versus an average of 5.7% since 1948. Two, during other recessionary periods, such as 1990, 92, and 2000 to 2003, when an unemployment levels increased markedly, Las Vegas revenue grew low single digits annually. Las Vegas was both less mature and diversified during these periods than it is today, making the relevancy of such historical comparisons imperfect. 3. Throughout the GFC, leisure visitation to Las Vegas was remarkably stable, with 32.8 million visitors in 2010 versus 32.9 million visitors in 2007. In contrast, convention visitation was actually weak, declining by plus 25% peak to through. 
Today, Caesar is generating record Las Vegas profits despite convention attendance still down close to 30% from pre-pandemic levels, a similar baseline decline than the GFC. While business travel is economically sensitive, two to three years of pent-up demand bothers uh, well for the continuation of the convention recovery in Las Vegas. Considering convention customers are two to three X more valuable than leisure customers, in our estimate, the recovery of this cohort should drive fixed cost leverage and earnings growth over time. Fourth, Las Vegas demand drivers uh, have diversified meaningfully over the past 15 years, with the um, city becoming a de facto sports and entertainment capital. Gaming revenue mix has declined by 1,000 basis points over this period as a result, making the city less susceptible, susceptible to substitution from regional casinos, which offer more affordable access to gaming. Five, importantly, 60% of Caesars revenue is derived from its regional casinos, which performed exceedingly well in the last cycle in part due to the substitution effect. Penn Entertainment, the largest regional gaming operator, had modestly higher revenue in 2010 versus 2007. And six, Caesar's operating margins are 1,200 basis points higher today than pre-pandemic levels, which reduces downside operating leverage, with the stock reflecting an estimated uh, 20 to 30 percent impairment to near-term earnings. We think investors are greatly overestimating the magnitude of downside cyclical risks. Leverage. We think investors are miscalculating risks from financial leverage. When screening the business on Bloomberg, uh, Caesar appears 7.7x levered versus our calculation of less than 4x. The difference is due to two items that Bloomberg does not adjust for. Number one, 1 billion of one-time losses in the digital business and number two, treatment of capitalized leases as debt. Caesar expect digital to operate at break even to modest profitability in 2023. Thus, these losses will roll off from the leverage calculation. While leases are economic liabilities that bear some characteristics that are less favorable than traditional debt, treating treating leases as a, a tantamount to debt would be a mistake for numerous reasons. Number one, Capital leases bear no principle, meaning there is no balloon payment at a specified future date that poses refinancing risks. Number two, lesser has no recourse to the uh, to the corporate assets of the le- le- of the leasee in event of a default. Three. MPV calculation of the leasability liability is inherently an imprecise and theoretical exercise, as a corollary investors appear to capitalize leases as higher at higher multiples than the associated opco earnings, a practice that arbitrarily destroys equity value. And fourth, capitalizing versus expensing rent is a function of lease duration in this way, having a 40-year lease structure, which essentially provides perpetual financing and thus limits operating risks. Arbitrarily makes the leasee appear more financially risky than if it had shorter-term leases. This is an example of accounting not reflecting economic reality. In summary, when ad- adjusting for digital losses and capitalizing uh, capitalized leases, CSR is approximately 4x levered, which is reasonable for a business with diversified revenues, strong operating margins, 40%, and minimal maintenance capex is a percentage of revenue, 5%. At current levels, EBITDA um, would have to decline by at least 40% before Caesar could not cover its fixed charges, not including the potential of for cost controls. Caesar is intent on reducing debt levels by using free cash flow to retire bonds at discounted rates and selectively by pursuing accredited sales. On this note, if it wished to accelerate its deleveraging, Caesar has the contractual right to sell the real estate underlying its Centaur assets, i.e. two properties in Indiana, to Vici for 12.5x EBITDA in a transaction that could generate two to $2.5 billion of tax-sheltered proceeds before 2025. This transaction would be accredited as Caesar currently trades at 7x EBITDA. Assuming no asset sales, the business should naturally delever from 4x to 3x by the end of 2024. Business quality. Caesar is a high quality business which can be appreciated by its strong and improving returns on tangible invested capital, plus 20%. 
Distinct economic modes that are present in its three business units, Las Vegas Regionals Digital, underpin its ability to sustain access returns. In Las Vegas, Caesar's advantage stems from its irreplaceable real estate and loyalty network. Caesar owns and operates eight casinos that are contingu contiguously located on the Central Park of Las Vegas Boulevard, controlling 25% of all rooms on the Strip. Even though Las Vegas revenue has grown 4% annually over the, 20, over the last 20 years, through two economic downturns, supply formation has been virtually non-existent in the past decade given a lack of develop, uh, developable land. Las Vegas room inventory has grown at a 0.0% CAGR from 2011 to 2022. In addition to the superior location of its pre precious real estate, Caesar enjoys a below replacement cost position in the market. With its uh, tenured incumbency, affording it a low property basis, Caesar can better compete for a class of customer than new builds slash redevelopments are unlikely to service given the high cost of market entry, which, which necessitates catering to a more upscale patron at higher ADRs to drive RI. Consider that average construction costs for results uh, world and Fontana Fontaine Bleu were roughly $1,500 per key. At this cost of development, Caesar's uh, 20K room strip portfolio alone would have a replacement value of $30 billion, which is 150% greater than its entire PP&E line item and 30% greater than its enterprise valuation. Caesar's loyalty network is also an important business advantage. With plus 60 million members, Caesar has the largest loyalty network in gaming, a testament to its iconic brand and unrivaled ecosystem of local and destination properties, 51 in total, and that has been amassed over multiple decades and would be impossible to replicate. By tapping this efficient source of recurring customer demand, Caesar drives superior utilization, both in terms of occupancy and customer quality, at its Las Vegas hotels. Caesar's Las Vegas EBITDA, um, with an R at the end, and margin is 50%, well above competitors. In regionals, uh, the company's source of advantage is regulatory, with a scarce uh, supply of gaming licenses, licenses and a lack of political will to expand access to gaming. The barriers to completion, uh, competition are high. This leads to a comparatively benign competitive environment. While regional gaming supports attractive returns on capital, the regulatory constraints that underpin its favorable market structure limit growth opportunities. In digital, the business benefits from a cost structure and retention advantages. Due to, number one, not having a pay market access fees given its possession of gaming licenses, i.e. skins. Number two, not having to pay technology, technology fees given its vertical integration. Three, having an established brand that requires less marketing to foster customer awareness. And four, its ability to monetize customers online and in person, which enhances LTV and thus lowers the return bar for justifying digital marketing. CSR is well positioned to, profit to profitably acquire market share. These customer acquisitions, acquisition advantages are compounded by Caesar's ability to, to deploy cash flow from its brick and mortar business to fund growth against digital competitors with higher costs of capital. Furthermore, Caesar should have a retention advantage due to its loyalty network and omni-channel value proposition. Crossover play in the land casinos from digital customers already exceeds over $200 million of revenue, plus 20% of trailing digital revenue that supports 50% incremental margin. Management notes that its digital customer attrition is less than 40%, which allows the business to dependably stack cohorts, reduce relatively inefficient acquisitions marketing, and drive a profitable business over time. Digital is currently loss-making as management reinvests profits to acquire profitable uh, cohorts in newly legalized states. Given the size of the industry at maturity, 30 billion plus, uh, combined with its uh, structural business advantages, Caesar is uh, investing aggressively behind this opportunity. However, management is wasting no time in achieving profitability as it refocuses its marketing efforts to drive engagement from its highest value customers. 
The business has now reached a break even despite limited traction in iGaming to date, which offers significant profit upside with successful ex execution. Management under conservative assumptions uh, projects that digital will earn a plus 30 uh, I'm sorry, plus 50% RIC on its $1 billion plus cumulative operating loss. This would imply a minimum of $500 million of annual EBITDA over the medium term. Applying a 20x multiple to this cash flow seems reasonable given the growth and high RIC characteristics of this business. For a business that we estimate is currently being ascribed to a negative value at today's valuation, digital could be worth over $10 billion over the medium term, which is more than Caesar's entire market cap. Valuation Enterprise trading is a trade... Enterprise trading is trading at 7x EBITDA and 9x unlevered free cash flow, excluding digital losses and growth capex on a run rate basis. Caesar trades at a meaningful discount relative to gaming comps, LVS, MGM, Win, Ben, Boyd, which have averaged 12x EBITDA and 18x unlevered free cash flow over the past 10 years. Caesar's valuation looks similarly um, compelling when measured against the broader hospitality complex, casual dining, restaurants, cruise lines, amusement parks, and gaming, which has traded at 11x EBITDA collectively over the past 10 years. Due to a wide dispersion and cash flow conversion from EBITDA within the gaming sector, we primarily focus on a, a normalized free cash flow ba based valuation methodology. Given our conviction that the risk of competitive disruption to Caesar's business is low, and thus the opportunity to continuing deploying capital at attractive rates of return is high, particularly within Las Vegas and digital, we believe the business is worthy of a mid teen multiple. At 15x, we which would be 3x below the average commanded by a gaming peers over the past decade, the equity would be worth $150 per share by the end of 2024, plus 20% upside. If we cut our 2024 earnings estimate by 25%, which would imply a GFC-like impact to the P&L, that appears highly improbable, the business would still generate of over $1.5 billion of normalized unlevered free cash flow, supporting an equity valuation of $65 per share before considering value from digital. Thus, at current valuation, we think the equity offers an enormous margin of safety and a highly asymmetric risk reward profile. We think the gap between the trading price and our estimate of intrinsic value could begin to converge as the market appreciates the durability of Caesar's earnings power through a cycle, through a cycle, its prospect for accelerating F FCF growth and a scope to deleverage the balance sheet. Management team. Our capital is invested alongside one of the most skilled operators and wealth creators in gaming, Tom Rieg. As background, Rieg became the CEO of Caesars after Elorado Resort's original gaming company, where he was previously CEO, acquired the former in a transaction orchestrated by Carl Icahn. Icahn had picked Rieg because of his exceptional track record of value creation at Eldorado as the ideal suitor to turn around the legendary gaming company. Rieg's operating prow prowess is reflecting in a uh, 30x appreciation in the share price under his leadership since joining the company from 2014 to October 2021, prior to the 60% sell-off. Importantly, we believe Rieg employs an operating mindset of a private business owner with a focus on maximizing long-term free cash flow per share. As the, uh, as the owner of over 700,000 shares, when fully vested, Reek is highly financially motivated to deliver against this objective for the benefit of shareholders. Risks. Number one, economic recession weakens operating results and leads to multiple compressions. Two, inflation remains elevated, which could weaken cash flow given exposure to railroad right debt and CPI-based leases. Three. Deleveraging a cadence is slowed in parallel with weaker operating results. 4. Las Vegas Convention and International Visitation is slow to recover. 5. Digital fails to generate attractive returns on capital. Catalyst. Earnings outperformance. Thank you very much for tuning in and see you next.